Now the third reaction which I'm going to discuss with you is also a kind of oxidation reaction which is famously known as iodoform test and the reagent for that I think we've discussed in our previous classes also is sodium hydroxide plus iodine which eventually gives you NaOI plus HI where NaOI that is called as sodium hypoiodite is my oxidizing agent which can also be written just as hypoiodite. Now this test is only going to be given by those compounds which have got the uh, naming like 2-all like propane 2-all or let's say butane 2-all or hexane 2-all and so on and by ketones which are uh, whose name is something like pentane 2 own or hexane 2 own or something like that. So please remember that the functional, uh, the structural linkage is this. That means any compound which has this kind of structure uh, or any compound which has this kind of structural linkage these kind of compounds are only going to show this kind of test that is iodoform test where you get the observation as a yellow PPT of iodoform coming out. So this test is used as a distinguishing test for detecting the presence of methyl alcohols. What is this? Methyl alcohol and methyl ketones. So are you a methyl? Are you a methyl alcohol? Are you a methyl ketone? So I'm going to do this iodoform test and if I get yellow PPT coming out, I'll say yes, you are a methyl alcohol or you are a methyl ketone. Let's take some examples and show you. For example, I'm going to take simple compound over here CH3, CH2, COH, CH3. Look at this children. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for a methyl alcohol. As I told you, I'm looking for this kind of structure. When I treat this compound with sodium hydroxide plus iodine and heat it, okay, you have to heat it also. And as we know, the, the terminal CH3 you have to remove out and the terminal CH3 will automatically get converted into a yellow colored crystalline product. You will write yellow PPT which is called as iodoform. It is yellow. You can see it. Yes, it can be used as a distinguishing test. So CHI3 and what happens to the remaining fragment? Just pay full attention over here. It's CH3, CH2C and just you make it convert it into an acid so it becomes C double bond O O minus and uh, instead of writing acid I'm going to write Na plus because I have taken alkali in the test tube so I cannot write acid I have to write the salt so this is going to be my uh, answer with this alcohol similarly if somebody starts with CH3 CH2 CO CH3 that is a methyl ketone and performs the test by heating with sodium hydroxide plus iodine it's the same thing is going to happen children you're going to break up this you know and the CH3 gets converted into CHI3 and the remaining fragment that is CH3 CH2CO look at this CH3 CH2CO gets connected with ONA so the predicting the products is not a big challenge so iodoform test is a very very simple test it's a kind of oxidation reaction given by only certain selective compounds that is the ones which have this kind of structural linkage to remember all methyl alcohols and all methyl ketones look at this so i if i just remove that and i just write h over there that becomes my ethanol ch3 ch2 oh so remember ethanol is the only primary alcohol so out of all the primary alcohols ethanol is the only primary alcohol which is going to show me this test so i'm just going to write i'm going to going to write hc O N A sodium formate. So that is again a one mark question. Uh, out of all the primary alcohols, there's only one which is going to show this test. That is ethanol. All the secondary alcohols uh, which are having the O H at the second position, if they are methyl alcohols, they are going to show this test. Tertiary alcohols, no, they cannot show this test. So it's a very fantastic test for me to distinguish between uh, different types of compounds. Children, we have discussed various kinds of oxidation before. Like for example, we discussed Tollens test, we discussed Felling's test, we discussed Hydroform test. Today, I'm going to talk about oxidation using strong oxidizing agents like potassium permanganate in uh, acid or potassium dichromate in acidic medium. What happens if you oxidize aldehydes and ketones with such reagents? Let's take an example. If I start with an aldehyde and a strong oxidizing agent, let's take KMnO4 only which is a very powerful oxidizing agent, it's going to directly oxidize it to an acid. So we'll be getting RCOOH. Look at this. 
So what have I done? I've just added an oxygen atom in the aldehyde. So the oxidation of aldehyde is not very, very difficult. So it happens without any bond breaking, first of all. I've not broken any bond. I've just inserted oxygen atom over there. So oxidation of aldehydes is comparatively a very, very easy task. It's not very challenging. Let's take ketones now. When I start oxidizing the ketone, I have to really do a, uh, do a big task of breaking the bond because I cannot convert this into an acid until I break this bond or this bond. Because when I have to convert it into an acid, I have to break the bond. So bond cleavage is required. So that is a point of difference between aldehydic oxidation and ketonic oxidation that in ketones we require the breaking of bond, the, the CC bond cleavage is required which is a very very strong bond and therefore drastic and vigorous conditions will be required for the oxidation of ketones. So that can be a question of one mark for exam that why is ketonic oxidation so difficult so that point can be written by us. Let's discuss uh, some specific examples which will make it very very clear to you. I'll be taking the example of a simple aldehyde first CH3 CH2 C double bond OH. I'm going to oxidize this by heating with a purple wallet colored compound that is potassium permanganate mixed with a little acid which becomes a very strong uh, oxidizing agent called as acidified potassium permanganate. The answers are very simple CH3 CH2 CH2 C double bond O. I'll be using different colors uh, purposely so as to show that there is a something added over here so it's easy to understand so this oxygen atom i've added so the, what is the answer coming out is the answer is a carboxylic acid with a same number of carbon atoms as the parent compound same number of carbon atoms please remember this point so you started with uh, four carbon atoms you ended with four carbon atoms there was no loss of carbon atoms let's start with ketones now I'm going to take this example of ketones uh, and I'm going to oxidize this again with a strong oxidizing agent potassium permanganate heated. The difference is it requires drastic conditions because here I'll have to break one of the bonds. I'll have to break the bond, uh, let us say the bond A or I'll have to break the bond B. When I break the bond A, I may get two fragments, this tiny one and a bigger one. And when I break bond B, I'll again get two fragments. Let's write both the answers children, pathway A, pathway B. When it happens via pathway A, the fragment number one is containing a CH3 and the other fragment contains CH3, CH2, CH2, C double bond O. Look at that, CH3 and the remaining fragment is this one. If you break the fragment, the bond B, then the first fragment comes out is this one, CH3, CH2, CH2 and the second fragment comes out is CH3, CO. CH3CO. We are going to remember a very important uh, rule over here, Popov's rule. The rule is not mentioned in the textbook, but the rule is used in our uh, book. It, the name is not there, but the application is there. So we must understand that what is Popov's rule. The rule says that whenever you break the ketonic bonds, the smaller alkyl group should remain attached with the carbonyl carbon. So here we have two alkyl groups. The first one contains three carbon atoms, one, two, three. The second one contains one carbon atom. So the smaller one is over here, this one. Methyl is the smaller one. So you are going to retain the smaller alkyl group with the CO. So the, the best bond which you are going to break is not the bond A but the bond B. So B pathway is going to be my uh, actually the answer the major product. The major product and how will I write the answers now? We are just going to just see what we are going to do. We are just going to write OH over here and this CH2 I will automatically just convert into COOH. Writing the answer is not that challenging. Okay. Similarly, uh, this is minor product now. These two are minor products. I'll just write OH over here and this I'll be converting into one carbon containing acid. Methyl is there. So what acid will I get? Methanoic acid. So I'll be writing HCOOH. So I, I think you have understood this that how am I going to break the ketone while oxidizing it and what is the difficulty uh, in oxidation of ketones. Uh, the difficulty is that we are going to break the strong carbon-carbon bonds and therefore strong vigorous conditions are required. The second difference as you can see uh, in aldehydes we get the product having the same number of carbon atoms but in the ketones oxidation we get the products with less number of carbon atoms than the parent compound. So children that was the uh, 
end of our reaction number three that is oxidation i'm extremely uh, confident that you have understood this if not just go on just see the video once again i'm uh, sure you will really understand it so that's uh, let's stop the video right now and uh, we'll continue in the next class with uh, some more special reactions of aldehydes and ketones like uh, reactions due to alpha hydrogen atom some name reactions and i'll finish up those particular topics so keep studying and uh, do let me know if you have any difficulty all right so take care children god bless keep studying always bye bye